take a look at the algo. Uh, this is the 120 20. 120 20. This is from I'm, I'm what I do is I turn the algo on at 940. There's a time where you can put it on um, in here where you can tell it when to trade. I let the first 10 minutes after the open shake out a little bit. Uh, you may want to do that. You can if you want. You don't have to. But there's a time feature where it can start and stop. Where's it at here? So you see start time is at 940. Stop time is at 1600. So I let it shake out the first 10 minutes and it starts looking for trades. So yesterday, uh, this is all day. This is what it was trading live yesterday um, from trading from the 20. So we started out and started taking trades here right after the open yesterday, right here. So the big red line uh, indicates a short side, short setup that you'll be getting on the algo. Um, if it's not a red line, it's a buy setup. This is the first wave trade. So this is the first wave trade after a trend change. Um, I'm using a 63 trail. Uh, what I've been finding, and we'll know more with uh, when we get more in-depth back testing, and um, from Tina. So, so thank you, Tina, for doing that for us. We'll have a little bit more in-depth on what ATR trail works the best. But I'm finding 63 has been holding the market very well. We know 72 is typically a trend change. Um, I've been using 63 as my ultimate uh, a trail target. Been working really, really well in the S&P. So it likes to come down to it, bounce right off of it, and continue its trend. It's done that uh, the past almost month since I've been uh, um, doing this. And we'll go over results next Wednesday at uh, for members only next Wednesday at 4.30. I'm going to go break this down at the inside of it. I did add one more thing to it. Um, it's a toggle switch. You don't have to use it if you don't want. This does not have a break-even plus one feature. So if we go through the trades yesterday that took, uh, you can see I have my ultimate trail here. I got my standard zone. This is just a 5438 zone. I got my first retracement trade, which is here. And then I got uh, a 20, 40, 60, 1,000 ticks is my target. So my ultimate stop would be my trail. I did add a stop in also. We're going to go over this next week. Wednesday, a hard stop. So you can either have a hard stop in place or whichever comes first. So if you don't want the hard stop to be in place on the algo, then you can have the trailer take out all targets. So if you get in, in this and it pops in this, fires in this trade here, if it closes below there by one candle, it's going to sell all your contracts for you. And whether you do two contracts, one contract, four contracts, eight contracts, doesn't matter, it's going to sell it. However, let's say you have a stop here, and Tina will help us out more on this uh, if, if which one's the best way to go about it. I've been just using the trail. But let's say you want a tighter stop and say, hey, I want a tighter stop than the trail, and I want to put a hard stop in here. It's going to look at the best case scenario. If it hits my hard stop first, it's going to get me out. If it's my trail stop first, it's going to get me out. So that's another feature I added uh, for you guys. Um, so it took that nice long into the close. It's going to trail. It's going to sell all contracts. I put the runner out to 1,000 ticks. It's not going to get out of these contracts until you close one candle, close below there. Then it's going to start stocking another trade, which never took any in the close. But the same way here, when it took this short, this short, this is a first, this is a trend change, first retracement trade. Trend change, first retracement trade was there short. Target 20, 40, 60 ticks. There's my 1,000 tick target. My trail 63 got stopped out there yesterday. You can see how it hit 63 again. What I'm looking to do is when it hits my 63, or if you guys find an, uh, a trail that you like to work, I'm looking to add positions um, if that hits it on the way down. Then it caught the one on the upside. You can see my 63 held here really good. Here also, another good time to add. So this is a nice little a spot to add. I've been finding um, if you have, a, if you are, if you are in your last contract, with a with an, and this is what Phil was going back to about adding runners. What I'm finding is is if we retest that 63 or that trail, that's a good time to add a small risk because then you put your stop right below the trail when it hits the outer trail, and um, so that's a nice little place to add maybe a position. 
the one thing I did add, which I'm, I'm going to add why we, we backtest this um, up for, for you guys, is that um, what, what Tina does a, a vigorous backtest for us, and she's getting it. Gerald, she's going to have that this weekend, I assume. I believe that she's going to have it this weekend, I think Gerald said. So I'll have to confirm with him, but I think she'll have it this weekend. She'll start testing, and then uh, we'll be good to go. Um, so what we'll do is is the one thing I'm adding uh, in the meantime, this is a Tava switch. You don't have to use it, but I'm adding a break-even plus one, and I'm going to tell you why. What I'm finding is is when the market runs hard on this from my experience trading this, when it runs hard like this, there's no way you're getting out break even plus one. What happens in chop markets or in oscillating markets, you'll get this, where you get, we're moving down, you hit target 20 ticks, 40 ticks, and then it comes right back up, and you take a loss on this last runner on two contracts because that covered at 41, what, 69, and the short was 67. So you, you had a two, almost three-point loss on two contracts. Well, I'm going to give you an option if you want to break even plus one as a toggle switch, and that'll get you out after that. You don't have to use it, though. It's an option. I prefer, because I'd like to take a little bit more risk on, I like saying, hey, here's my contracts. Let's, let's let the trail take me out. And I don't care if I hold it all day long. Let's get my initial contracts out. Let's get the majority of risk out here in the initial side of the contracts, I mean, inside of the algo, and then let's let this sucker breathe. Let it breathe. Let it run up all day or down all day. What you're going to find when you get this in your hands, there's some trades will be pulling on at 9, 30, 10, 11 o'clock during the day, and they will hold this runner all the way into the close. It's happening on a weekly basis. Not it's not every two three weeks. It's happening on a weekly basis on some of these markets where you get the runner and it'll just run all the way into the close. So and you don't have to have just one contract running. You do multiple contracts. You can take let's say you do six contracts. You can take three off in the beginning on the first target, then scale one, scale one, and then scale the other if you'd like. So you know you can do that also uh, in your contracts. You say hey take three off it the first and so on. So that's if you want to do that. But that's yesterday. It had a, a nice little day yesterday after the Fed. Um, so we'll go over all this tomorrow. Um, I'll show you what happens today after she runs towards the end of the day, and I'll post this uh, chart here towards the end of the day. All right, so we're going to have a conference call on this next Wednesday at 4.30. We're going to start getting into the guts of it, but I did add this in um, this is a first wave trade. You don't have to take first wave trades. So let's say let's say that you want to take all trades. And I get back out of here and I come down. Hold on one sec, Gerald. And I click this off and I go, okay, no first wave trades. There's my 63 trail. And then I come in, I enable it. Now it's going to take additional trades. I like the first wave trades myself, but depending on what time frame you trade, you may want more trades to come up. So if you trade a larger time frame, you want to, what more trades to come up. So if you want to add trades on, like here, if you want to add trades on, you just let it take every single pullback. I've got it set to where I love when it gets close to that, um, that trailing ATR, it adds positions on. So you can do that, or you can take it back off, and you can do um, with, with only taking wave one. What wave one says is, a, is saying after a trend change, I'm taking the first wave down. All right, so that's basically what it's saying as far as that goes. But I, I, I am adding a breaking plus one because I have a feeling that some of you are going to want to trade smaller time frames on this. And you don't want to hold a 1,000 tick target if you're trading a 13 Rico, if that makes sense. So, you know, what I'm going to do, so I'll put wave back one on there. So what I'm going to do is go break even plus one as a toggle switch. Does it mean you have to use it? No. You know, you can, you guys can do what you want with this algo. I'm leaving it very open, user-friendly, how you guys want to do it. But I think the more parameters I add into it, it gives the user more options. So if you trade a smaller time frame, let's say a 1.13.13, 13, you're going to get a lot of single and double. So in baseball terms, you're going to be batting a lot of singles and doubles. You're not going to be batting for home runs like you trade a 120, 125, you know, 130, 135. You're looking for the home run. 
you're looking saying, hey, I'm putting myself in a position where it's only going to trade, you know, a, a, a stat that Tina gave me, which is a great stat, you go to first wave trades, what was it, 63% increase, uh, Tina, the algo and the AI determined, the AI determined it was a 63% increase in profitability just by taking the first wave on the 35 Renko, by not taking every single wave. Yes, on the 135. So that's the type of information we're going to get out, and we appreciate Tina helping out with her artificial intelligence. That's the kind of stuff we need to know, you know. So first waves are really, really good on longer time frames, all right?